明日になれば伝説のスーパーサイヤ人俺はサイヤ人の王子なんだ俺は王子だ誰が貴様なんかに誰が Exactly what you heard. With three dollars, you can have full access to my manga in high quality, like Yamoshi as a girl, and of course, the best Akumo Saga. All this and much more with more than five gigs of fan manga access. Patreon and comments! In broad daylight, Vegeta was remembering all the battles he had had throughout his prosperous life. And as he thought about it, Vegeta noticed that even when he did better, Goku being obviously more powerful, he ended up facing more powerful opponents as a result. From that, over time Goku was evolving and Vegeta was also surpassing him. But he was never the first. Vegeta was always in second place for everything. The prince's envy of all warriors of the Saiyan race began to grow more than it should have, and because of Vegeta's pride and determination, his growing envy became something even more dangerous and worrying. Vegeta was in a moment where he would do anything to overcome Goku. Vegeta remembered when he was Majin Vegeta for a while, and that didn't like him very much. This time, Vegeta wanted to have his own power in a clean and honest way, where he could overcome Goku at least once in his life. Vegeta then had a somewhat risky idea. The Z warriors were in a moment of peace when only Goku and Vegeta trained day after day. So Vegeta wanted to test the results of the training he had. Vegeta decided to fight Goku to see how powerful he was and went to Goku's house to challenge him. Vegeta goes to his rival's house who was eating outside. Vegeta then approaches and said, Kakarot, what do you think about fighting now? Me against you. I think that we will be stronger. We need to warm it up a bit before we get mushy, said Vegeta to Goku who cheered up at the time. Goku finished eating quickly and dropped the food bowl on the floor. Goku got up excited and said, Only if it's now, let's go, exclaimed excited Goku. Goku followed Vegeta to an area that was quite isolated from the city, so they could fight calmly. They stretch and warm up to fight calmly. Vegeta and Goku position themselves for battle and coldly face each other. The two began to battle in the form of a Super Saiyan in the first level. Goku and Vegeta began a frantic exchange of punches, unleashing powerful attacks on each other. Vegeta wanted to end it soon, so he transformed in the form of Super Saiyan God. While Goku is still in the form of Super Saiyan 1, Goku found himself at a disadvantage against the Prince of Saiyans. So Goku turned into Super Saiyan Blue. But Vegeta went into Blue Evolution at the same time. Goku found Vegeta's behavior strange and a little worried. Vegeta was being merciless in the blows he applied to Goku, making their fight intense and serious. The Z warrior Son Goku had the idea to dodge the blows using his superior instinct form. But Vegeta didn't let it go, and achieved his most superior powerful form, Superior Ego Transformation. The Saiyans exchanged furious blows and partially destroyed the environment around them, and despite Vegeta's powerful and fast punches, his opponent managed to dodge most of them and counter-attack. Goku maintained an advantage and ended up winning the fight. Vegeta fell to the ground, his hair slowly returning to its original state. Vegeta was out of breath and most of all furious. The prince stood up placing his hands on his knees. Vegeta breathing uncontrollably, he straightened his spine, standing this time. As he gazed at Goku, Vegeta's blood was burning, his teeth were grinding together. His brow was furrowed, clearly showing his fury. Goku tried to approach Vegeta, but the Saiyan was pushed by Vegeta who took one last look at Goku before flying away. Vegeta flew to a place with nothing. It was deserted. There were only a few mountains. The Saiyan stopped at the top of one of the mountains and closed his eyes reflecting on himself. Vegeta wanted more power, enough to be superior to Goku. Vegeta wanted even more than he already had, and he was thinking about it. Vegeta thought of many things, many moments and many occasions, but one in particular made him open his eyes. Vegeta remembered Brawly, the legendary Super Saiyan. Vegeta then said to himself, that damn Brawly was so strong that neither I nor Kakarot were able to defeat him individually. This was only possible after we did that shameful fusion. That is, I need this. I need the legendary Super Saiyan transformation, said Vegeta opening his eyes to that opportunity that had arisen. 
Vegeta has finally made an important decision. He again started flying to the planet where Brawly was. The trip took a few hours as he was using one of Bulma's ships. But after a while, he finally arrived on Brawly's planet. It didn't take long for Vegeta to find the legendary Super Saiyan, so Vegeta went to talk to him. As soon as Vegeta saw Brawly heating his food that he had hunted with his own hands, Vegeta approached the legendary Saiyan and said, Hello, Brawly, Vegeta said with a slightly forced smile. Brawly was surprised to see that Vegeta was there, and then he replied saying, Hello, Vegeta. Didn't expect to see you around here. Would you like some meat? Offered Brawly to Vegeta, who sat in front of him. Vegeta took the meat offered by Brawly and ate it quickly, as he was apparently quite hungry due to the long journey, surprising even Brawly. Vegeta then looked at Brawly and realized that he was wanting to know why Vegeta was there. So the Prince of Saiyan said, I'll get straight to the point. I want you to teach me how to activate Super Saiyan Legendary Mode, just like you. In this way, I will become stronger and be able to defeat Kakarotto. That is my wish, said the Saiyan, looking fixed at Brawly, who was even more surprised by the prince's speech. Brawly, on the other hand, looked a little withdrawn, as if he didn't know what to say to teach Vegeta. Brawly sighed and said, Look, Vegeta, the legendary Super Saiyan transformation isn't something I could teach you. I also don't know how I transform. I just meet certain requirements. Then I can use the transformation. It's a genetic condition of mine. I don't think I can teach you. When I change, my mind goes blank. It stays blank. I only think about destroying, and my body becomes one with my mind. And then I can access that shape. I can't teach you. That will depend solely on you. I... I was born this way, said Brawly, half crestfallen, looking at Vegeta. Brawly was bad with his words, but he tried to explain as much as he could, so as not to upset the prince. Vegeta, on the other hand, was already impatient. He looked at Brawly and said, Okay. Are you saying that in the end, I need to be in a state of mindlessness? That's pretty stupid, but I can understand. However, it didn't help me much, but still I appreciate it. I'll have to seek help from someone else. Goodbye, said Vegeta, getting up furiously and heading towards the ship, leaving Brawly behind, who was a little upset for not being able to help the Prince of the Saiyans. Vegeta went flying through space using his ship. He didn't know where to go now, but in a measly instant, an idea came into his mind. Vegeta remembered the planet where Goku managed to learn teleportation and thought to himself that he should go to that planet because he could learn something or discover something that would make him more powerful. And thinking that way, Vegeta went to the planet. It would take a few hours to arrive on average. Halfway through, Vegeta tried to calm down a little so that he could concentrate more on his plans and execute it perfectly. After a while, Vegeta arrived in the planet's orbit and watched him with a wide smile because there Vegeta would find the answers to what he was looking for to finally defeat Kakarotto once and for all. Vegeta looked at the planet of the Yardrat race and went towards a civilization he had seen. Vegeta landed calmly nearby and from there he saw some Yardrat. Vegeta addressed the Yardrat who appeared to be the leader, introduced himself and said that he would like to find their king as soon as possible. The Yardrat was really the leader of that village. He didn't feel threatened by the Saiyan, so he believed in his words. And so he replied, very well, Prince of Saiyans, Know that on this planet we practice gerontocracy. You know what that is? Questioned the yard rat, leaving Vegeta very confused. Vegeta felt that he had already heard a similar word, but he didn't know what it meant. And just seeing Vegeta's confused face, the yard rat warrior continued, It works like this. The older ones are the bosses, and you'll have to find a yard rat elder and wise. I and my friends will escort you there. Please follow us, said the yard rat, taking Vegeta somewhere with his companions. Vegeta was very suspicious, but he followed them without saying many words, and went to the highest tower on the planet. The yard rat stopped in front of the door and opened it, waving for Vegeta to enter. They all went up 3,148 stairs until they reached the top floor of the tower. The yard rat went towards the room where the king used to be and bowed. Unlike Vegeta, who stood normally, the king was not impressed with the arrival of the prince of the warrior race of Saiyans and said, I already expected his arrival, Prince Vegeta. By the way, I know exactly what you came to do here on this planet. I see that you are determined because you didn't even get tired of climbing the high tower of the planet of the Yardrat race, said the king of the Yardrat with a hoarse voice. He was really quite old. Vegeta, impressed by the wisdom of this being, replied, So tell me, how can I obtain the necessary power to defeat my Kakarot rival? Could you answer that for me? Questioned Vegeta, getting straight to the point. King Yardrat laughed and replied, Do not doubt my wisdom for that is what makes me the leader of these lands. I know very well that you've met the legendary Super Saiyan Brawly. I can make you have his technique and thus satisfy his request. 
said the old man surprising Vegeta. Vegeta was shocked. How did the king know about those things? After thinking, Vegeta questioned him. But how? How is a yard rat going to teach me the legendary Super Saiyan technique? Asked Vegeta, doubting the ability of the old man. The king calmly looked at Vegeta and came closer, saying, Brawly is not the only one who mastered this technique. Much less was he the first to be a legendary Super Saiyan. There is a warrior who has mastered this technique for years. Look for a Saiyan known as Sprout and tell him that King Yardrat sent you, then ask him to teach you this technique. Sprout will teach you. Suspicious, Vegeta says. That's impossible. All the Saiyans have already been killed. Vegeta exclaimed with a serious expression to the old man. The old man then replied, Go to these coordinates and see with your own eyes if I'm lying. Come to me and kill me, exclaimed the old man. Vegeta felt that he could trust the king's words and left after saying thanks. The king had given Vegeta the coordinates of where the legendary Super Saiyan would be. These coordinates were easily placed on the ship that Vegeta was using to travel. While Vegeta navigated through space, he began a rigorous body training system with gravity increased several times. Vegeta started with push-ups, then advanced to sit-ups and lastly squats. Vegeta also did a circuit of blows in the air, punches, kicks, knees, elbows and everything else he could do. After a few hours of training, Vegeta had finally arrived at the destined planet. His ship landed in the deserted place. Apparently there was no sign of life there. Vegeta donned his battle gear and flew out of the ship. After a few minutes of flying, Vegeta felt energy rising from the ground. They were strange creatures. They seemed to be dinosaurs. Eight dinosaurs appeared in all, all from the ground. Vegeta felt threatened and they started shooting key blasts at the animals, which were badly hurt. In all, four died. But in the sky from the clouds that were covering the planet, two more creatures appeared flying. They were very similar to aquatic animals on planet Earth. These animals took Vegeta by surprise, hitting him fiercely, knocking him to the ground. Vegeta got up and finished off the four land animals that were chasing him with a Gallic gun. Vegeta exterminated the four animals at once and with a single movement. Now Vegeta wanted to exterminate those animals that looked like sharks. Vegeta flew at the animals again, doing a Gallic gun which pierced one of the animals, killing it instantly. Once the creature died, it disintegrated into dust. Vegeta shaped his life energy into a kind of keyblade. Using it, he attacked the last creature, splitting it in half. This creature also turned to dust. Vegeta went down to the ground to rest. Those attacks left the Saiyan a little bewildered. Vegeta followed the rest of the way on foot. And at a certain moment of his walk, Vegeta saw in a distance a group of brutes that were in great numbers. There were hundreds of strange beings. They were tall, strong, and seemed to exude fear. These creatures started walking towards Vegeta, slowly circling and cornering him. These barbarians had ropes and wire, and with these weapons they began to brutally bind Vegeta. Vegeta managed to raise his energy to the most exaggerated point possible, managing to produce an immense and dense explosion of ki, which drove the barbarians away from him. He also removed the ropes and wires that were holding him, but these objects hurt Vegeta in a way that he could not and would not know how to explain. Vegeta had more stamina than that, but even so he was pierced and no doubt suffered a few bruises. Vegeta faced the barbarians and shouted, You damned! How dare they try to hurt me with such insignificant objects! You will pay! said Vegeta, furious. Vegeta screamed and the moment he finished the sentence he entered Super Saiyan level 1 mode. Vegeta raised a hand and pointed at the barbarians, launching several key blasts of energy at them. These blasts wouldn't kill them but would leave them badly injured, to the point of being unconscious. Vegeta looked around in a way everyone was on the floor unconscious, and that was his plan. Vegeta just ignored the barbarians on the ground and ran across seas, mountains, deserts, raging storm. The weather was incredibly unstable. It was unpredictable, completely random. But it didn't take long for Vegeta to see a castle. He took a deep breath, prepared himself mentally, and started flying over the castle where the castle was. Vegeta walked toward the castle and was impressed by its size. As he stood in front of the castle, a door opened and Vegeta entered. As he knew the owner had noticed his presence. Upon entering the castle, Vegeta noticed that there were some old and very well-maintained artifacts. Vegeta then stopped observing the artifacts when he felt that he was not alone. That there was one more person there with him when a voice echoed through the corridor. The owner of the voice said, What do you want here, invader? How dare you trespass on sacred territory? Can't you see this is no place for bugs like you? A calm and serious voice coming from the top floor of the castle questioned Vegeta. Vegeta looked around and looked for the voice he questioned. I want to know who you are and where you are. 
And how dare you call me a bug, you bloody, said Vegeta questioning in his voice. The owner of the voice questioned Vegeta back, speaking in a sarcastic tone. You broke into my house and still ask who I am? Wouldn't I be the one to ask that question? In addition to being a miserable insect, you are nothing but an arrogant worm, said the owner of the voice. Vegeta then realized that the voice was right and replied, Okay, okay, I'm Vegeta, Prince of the Saiyans, and I'm looking for a Saiyan with the ability to reach the form of a legendary Super Saiyan, said Vegeta introducing himself and talking about why he was in the castle. The owner of the voice came down and appeared behind Vegeta. The owner of the castle had long and spiky hair and was much bigger and more muscular than Vegeta and had a serious and mean face. As soon as Vegeta realized that the voice was behind him, the Saiyan turned and looked at him in surprise. The owner of the voice then said, Vegeta, it's been a while since I heard that name. My name is Sprout and this is my castle. I'm the Saiyan you're looking for and who manages to reach the legendary form. How did you know of my existence? said Sprout, formally introducing himself. Vegeta had to turn his head slightly upwards to face Sprout, who was bigger than Vegeta. So the Saiyan said, King Yardrat told me about you. He said that you could help me achieve this transformation of a legendary Super Saiyan. Could it be that you really can? said Vegeta, clarifying Sprout's doubt. Sprout laughed and answered the Prince of Saiyan, saying, You are not ready to transform into the legendary Super Saiyan yet. To be ready for that transformation, you'll have to go through five challenges first, said Sprout, speaking the truth to Vegeta. Vegeta, hearing this, was surprised as he expected Sprout to ask for something more difficult than just five challenges. Vegeta, with a slight smile, said, Easy as that? I thought you were going to ask me for something in return, or something like that, said Vegeta, mocking what Sprout had said about the five challenges to transform into a Super Saiyan. Sprout's face turned serious and looked away. He said, I owe that King Yardrat. And besides, your training will help me a lot too. Well, enough talk. Bring me 17 heads of those flying monsters, but you'll have to do it without taking your feet off the ground. If by chance you take them off, you'll have to start the whole challenge again. Understood? Said Sprout, explaining the first challenge to Vegeta. Vegeta nodded, trusting that the Saiyan's words. Vegeta then started to run outside the castle, but before leaving the castle, he was interrupted by a shout. Come back here, said Sprout, ordering Vegeta to come back. Vegeta then came back and questioned, What is it? said Vegeta, questioning Sprout. Sprout said, You just took your feet off the ground while running. To get outside, you'll have to teleport or walk. Sprout said, correcting Vegeta. Vegeta seemed to be surprised by all that. Several types of confused thoughts went through the Saiyan's head, impending his line of reasoning that was already not the best. Vegeta grumbled at Sprout's comment and then thought and thought and finally found a method to carry out the challenge. Vegeta began to press his feet against the ground, dragging them. Vegeta dragged himself slowly until after a few minutes, he managed to get out of Sprout's castle and stand on the land outside the castle. Vegeta took a deep breath and then created an aura of vital energy around him, and with that pressure exerted on his body, Vegeta sank his feet into the ground, planting them in the part of the earth where he was. Then Vegeta with his energy did a kind of blade, which in a quick movement separated the rock where his feet were from the rest of the surrounding rocks. Vegeta then started flying with a piece of rock attached to his feet. That way, he couldn't easily lift his feet off the ground. Vegeta went to the skies trying to feel the energy of the flying creatures, but he didn't find any right away. So the Saiyan spent a few minutes wandering aimlessly looking for the flying creatures, until after a few minutes he saw in the distance a kind of nest of those animals that Sprout told the Saiyan to hunt. Vegeta sneaked into the nest and again created a blade of energy, and in the blink of an eye he eliminated everyone in that nest. And not too far away, Vegeta saw a pile of skulls from animals that were already dead. Vegeta took those skulls of the animals and placed them around him. There were 17 skeletons in total, just as Sprout had offered for him. Vegeta then took the heads to the castle with the feet still stuck to the rock. As soon as Vegeta entered the castle, he noticed that Sprout was sitting on the ground. Sprout looked at Vegeta who had just arrived and said, Well, well, looks like you're really smart, just like your papa. Sensational. Let's go to the next challenge. Vegeta, as you well know, this planet has some pretty annoying barbarians. I want you to go and defeat their leader and bring him to me, and you can leave your feet on the ground this time. You passed the first task. Congratulations. Sprout said smiling. It was a completely sadistic smile, but at least he approved of Vegeta's deeds. Vegeta found himself with no choice but to go after the leader of the barbarians. As Sprout had asked, Vegeta left the castle and started flying over the place so fast that he started to produce strong winds. Whenever he went, Vegeta then felt the energy of several people gathered. 
He went down to the ground and in a sneaky way, Vegeta grabbed one of the Barbarian's limbs and took him high above the clouds. Vegeta faced the Barbarian with extreme coldness and hatred and asked, Who is your leader? Answer me immediately before I end your miserable life, Vegeta said, questioning the Barbarian. The Barbarian then responded by pointing to a young man among the other people. Uh, he, he, it's the one with a white band on his arm, said the Barbarian in complete despair. Vegeta threw the Barbarian towards what appeared to be their base and shortly afterwards fired hundreds of energy blasts at the Barbarians, destroying their base and forcing their boss to appear. As soon as the leader appeared, Vegeta grabbed him and flew as fast as he could, reaching Sprout's castle in a matter of seconds. Vegeta threw the Barbarian to the ground. The Barbarian was completely dizzy from the speed Vegeta had flown towards the castle. Sprout gave a sadistic smile, looking like a psychopath. Sprout put his head over the Barbarian's face and said, Looks like I won, as usual. You gave me a lot of headache, you know. Get lost, you worm, Sprout said in a tone of complete sarcasm and anger. Sprout held the Barbarian's neck with one hand and in the other was a powerful blast of ki that Sprout threw at the Barbarian, thus ending his existence. Sprout was smiling in a cruel way that scared even the Saiyan Prince, Vegeta. Sprout faced Vegeta and congratulated him, saying, Congratulations, great prince of the Saiyans. You did better than I expected. Another challenge completed. I'll give you the third challenge now. Pay close attention. The third challenge is about... Sprout looked at Vegeta, who had managed to correctly complete all the challenges Sprout had given to the Prince of the Saints. Vegeta was visibly happy for his achievement, thinking that he would finally learn the legendary Super Saiyan transformation. However, Sprout completely cut Vegeta's animation, saying, Vegeta, now, you must go to a cave, start your last challenge, and after completing this challenge, you will be able to transform into a legendary Super Saiyan, said Sprout, looking at Vegeta who got excited. Vegeta then went to the cave that Sprout had mentioned. Sprout went with Vegeta to explain to him how the cave would work. A few minutes passed and they finally reached the cave. Sprout then said, this is an ancient cave. I won't spoil the surprise, but I assure you, thinking too much will be bad for you. Anyway, good luck. Once you finish this last test, you don't need to look for me anymore. You can go straight to Earth again. Go and show what you are capable of, said Sprout, getting away from Vegeta and going back to his castle. Vegeta entered the cave, wondering how he would manage to use the legendary Super Saiyan transformation. Vegeta thought that if his old self was still present, he would be able to use the transformation without all that trouble. At the same moment that Vegeta thought that, something started to appear in front of him, it was the old version of Vegeta, from when he went to Earth for the first time to conquer the planet, Vegeta stared at his copy, completely confused and surprised. Vegeta's copy approached him and said, look, if it isn't Vegeta's weakling, you lost your essence, your hate. Since you started living with those damn humans, you've gotten even weaker. Where's that anger of yours? The rage that could destroy everything. Remember, remember when you were Frieza's doormat, when you were defeated by him. Remember when you were humiliated by Kakarado on Earth. Remember when you were eliminated in the Tournament of Power, from when you became Majin Vegeta. Try to remember all of that. From all the times you felt powerless and insufficient, from the moments you suffered from letting go of your anger. You've become dependent on others, Vegeta, are you proud of that? I'm sure not, Vegeta's clone said, prowling around him, trying to provoke the anger of the original Vegeta. And their effort apparently worked. Vegeta exploded with rage and punched his clone in the face, who was thrown away. The clone crashed against the wall, looking injured, but moments later, he got up as if nothing had happened. The clone stared at Vegeta and then said, Is that all you have, Prince of Saints? Do you think that's enough to defeat me, or defeat Kakarado? You will need more, much more. Vegeta got angry with his clone and then went after him, hitting him with a punch in the stomach and several other blows through the regions of his body. Vegeta's clone felt all the blows and was even more injured. After being punched in the jaw by Vegeta, the clone slowly began to disappear. Vegeta left the cave and looked at his fists saying, I already understand. This is what I need. This is the energy I was missing said Vegeta shouting in a loud voice. Vegeta left the planet and began flying at high speed, heading for Earth. On the way to Earth, Vegeta watched the planet where he lived from afar and smiled, barely able to contain his joy for what was to come. Vegeta would finally be able to fight against his greatest rival, using the absurd power he gained from Sprout. Goku's defeat would stop being a dream and would become reality in moments. At least that's what Vegeta imagined would happen at that time. Time. Vegeta then dove towards his target. 
going with all his speed to where his opponent was. The Prince of the Saints landed softly, as if he didn't want anything, and as soon as Vegeta touched the ground, he began his quest to quench his thirst for victory and power. After a while looking, Vegeta finally found his next opponent. Goku, without realizing anything, was happy to see Vegeta who arrived greeting Goku and with a smile and an ironic and mocking tone, Vegeta said, Hello, Kakarado. We haven't seen each other for a while. Where have you been? Said Vegeta, greeting and questioning Goku. Goku didn't understand Vegeta's irony and answered him seriously, What do you mean, Vegeta? It was you who came out of nowhere. I've been around here the entire time. Anyway, where have you been? You've been training, haven't you? Said Goku, who was confused by the way Vegeta was talking to him. Vegeta laughed and with an arrogant tone, continued the conversation, saying, There's only one way to find out about this. You will have to accept a rematch. And this time I will beat you, Kakarado. Said Vegeta, optimistic. Goku scratched the back of his head and then said, You are no match for me, Vegeta. No matter how hard you try and be strong. You will never be stronger than me, as long as I'm alive and well, you won't come close to defeating me," said Goku, trying to discourage Vegeta. Vegeta ignored what Goku said and went to an open space so they could fight without destroying too much. Goku accompanied him, because he knew he wouldn't be able to convince Vegeta, not even after beating him several times, so the Saiyan just accepted and went after Vegeta for another duel, which Goku was sure he would win. The Saiyajin stretched and prepared to fight each other, and as soon as they finished stretching, they started to face each other and gather energy. Goku took the first step, charging towards Vegeta who reacted by hitting towards Goku. Goku's punch lightly hit Vegeta, who hit him full with a knee, which broke Goku's defenses and gave Vegeta an opening to land another kick on Goku that sent him flying away. Goku, in an act of ignorance, transformed into a Super Saiyan God, Vegeta accompanied him doing the same. Both exchanged several powerful blows, where neither of them missed. Both Goku and Vegeta were having difficulties in creating a large opening so that they could attack each other for real. Until Goku managed to distance himself and gathered enough ki to transform into Super Saiyan Blue, Vegeta, seeing Goku doing this, also achieved this transformation and they returned to fighting incessantly. The ki blasts released by Vegeta didn't seem to hurt Goku too much, who was missing all of his ki blasts. Goku was feeling an abnormal difficulty in the fight and that made him appeal to his superior instinct and as usual, as soon as he finished transforming, Vegeta was already in his superior ego. When the two went to this form, the combat became much more unbalanced and this made life easier for Goku, who was now dominating the fight more. Both warriors were fighting with all their wits, but Goku was worried about what would happen to the earth due to their forces colliding. Gradually some Z warriors appeared to check where such energy was coming from, which was threatening to destroy the earth. Goku then landed two blows to Vegeta's stomach and kicked him away, as he wanted to end the duel as quickly as possible. But Vegeta fiercely advanced on Goku who was on the defensive. Without many choices, Goku decided to go all out against Vegeta and hit him with several consecutive blows. Vegeta was seeing his defeat until he took a punch that made him fly away, then a Kamehameha was launched by Goku, hitting Prince Vegeta, that was enough for Goku to leave Vegeta unconscious, however, something out of the ordinary was happening. A green aura was surrounding Vegeta's body. After being knocked out by Goku, Vegeta slowly got to his feet. Vegeta's vision was directed towards Goku, but something was different. The green aura that began to surge through Vegeta's body caused the sky to turn black, Vegeta's hair was a completely different color, his hair was green, his eyebrows became the same color, and Vegeta's aura became more apparent. His pupil and iris momentarily disappeared and his eyes turned yellow after Vegeta fully transformed. His muscles and veins were apparent in his clothing, more so than usual. Vegeta let out an extremely loud scream that could be heard from meters away. Goku was so surprised, he couldn't show any reaction. Vegeta slowly made the first move taking only a single step, but before he could touch his other foot to the ground, Vegeta was completely gone, taking his presence with him. Goku was confused, and before he could react, Vegeta hit him three times in a row, a punch to the stomach, a knee to the chin, and a punch to the ribs. Goku felt the impact of the blows, and distanced himself. At that moment, Vegeta appeared again, looking like a wild animal as he fought. The Z warriors who were there near Goku's house, were watching that clash closely, Everyone was scared and wondering what had happened to Vegeta. 
Piccolo, who watched that terrified, said, The legendary Super Saiyan is a transformation that unites the evil of the user with the most irrational form possible, cursed be Vegeta. Piccolo said through gritted teeth. Vegeta was quite out of breath, so looking at Goku, the prince of the Saiyan said, Kakarado, come, said Vegeta, going after Goku this time. Goku appeared to be completely bewildered. Goku's attacks seemed to be easily predictable to Vegeta, which in return, he managed to disarm Goku's defense several times, hitting him in the most merciless ways possible. Goku, in turn, tried to hit Vegeta who was in a state where he felt nothing but pure hatred. Vegeta grabbed Goku by the face and threw him several meters, sending Goku crashing into several mountains. Vegeta didn't stop, and before Goku had any reaction, Vegeta continued to kick and hit Goku incessantly. Goku managed to land a powerful blow to Vegeta's ribs, which made him unable to hit Goku anymore. Now the fight was starting to even out. Goku and Vegeta were exchanging blows so frantic, they produced shock waves with their punches. The wave of destruction that the Saiyan's blows were leaving managed to destroy the terrain around them without much difficulty. At a certain point, Vegeta realized what he would need to reach the maximum power of the legendary Super Saiyan. In order for Vegeta to be able to defeat Goku, he would need to be in a state where hatred had completely dominated his body. A state in which Vegeta would be in his most savage form possible, just as he was before coming to Earth, someone resentful and with a deep hatred of all things and people. But, Vegeta didn't want to be like that. He had managed to live quite well without his anger, but if he wanted to defeat Goku, he would have to give up everything Vegeta had gained. Krillin watched everything, quite nervous, Goku's friend sweating cold with fear of the outcome of that fight. The fight was still intense, Vegeta and Goku exchanged powerful blows, unable to stop. Goku was the one who was the most injured, however, now he managed to have a base to not let Vegeta hurt him again. But, it seemed that this base wasn't working, as Vegeta was able to easily break it. Vegeta managed to corner Goku in several different ways, leaving Goku completely without any alternatives. Goku was getting the worst of it, however, and the fight was heading towards a truly brutal finish. Vegeta hit Goku with a punch to the face, which stunned Goku for a few seconds, and that was enough. Vegeta grabbed Goku by the neck and threw him to the ground, then pulled Goku by the foot and began to spin him at high speed, throwing him against several mountains. Even before Goku fell to the ground, Vegeta was already behind the Saiyajin, hitting him with a punch to the back, which sends Goku into the sky due to the force of the punch. Vegeta then flew as fast as possible, and upon reaching the sky, Vegeta closed his hands, connecting their fingers and brought them to the top of his head. When Goku was close enough, Vegeta landed the blow on Goku's chest, making him quickly return to the ground. Goku crashed into the ground, and before he could do anything, Vegeta started firing several blasts of ki at Goku, completely destroying the place where the Saiyan had fallen. Vegeta stayed in the air, motionless, as he watched the dust rise. Vegeta then let out another thunderous scream this time. Vegeta had a loaded Galico in his hand, ready to finish Goku. Vegeta was smiling arrogantly, because he knew he would end up beating his strongest rival, and that Vegeta was the strongest in his current state. Vegeta moved his hands slowly back, getting ready to attack Goku. Vegeta moved his hands forward again, launching another attack. Goku who had returned to using his superior instinct, managed to dodge the attack. Goku was as furious as Vegeta, who returned to exchange blows with the Prince of the Saints. The fight was back to its peak and although Vegeta still had the upper hand, Goku was getting closer and closer to matching him. Goku landed a knee on Vegeta that caused the Prince of Saints to have his own guard broken. Goku landed another kick on Vegeta that sent him flying, and then fired several key blasts in a row. After being hit by all the key blasts, Vegeta couldn't help but scream furiously, opening cracks around him, then Vegeta screamed even louder, making each crack open even more. Vegeta charged at Goku at a speed that a Saiyan's eyes couldn't keep up with. Goku couldn't react to it, not even with his superior instinct. Vegeta arrived, hitting Goku's torso with his key encased head, making Goku spit blood. Vegeta tucked his legs in and did a front flip, stretching his legs in the middle of the acrobatics, which sent Goku flying. Goku realized that he was flying and tried to regain control in midair, and as soon as Goku did, he received a Galico. Vegeta was proud and said, This time you didn't deviate, Kakarado, said Vegeta, mocking Goku. Vegeta lunged at Goku after hitting him, and was met with an elbow strike from Goku as he landed.
Goku ignored Vegeta's words, regaining control as he fell. Goku flew towards Vegeta, hitting him with a flying kick. Goku continued flying in a left to right turn, sending Vegeta flying and crashing into a rock. Before Vegeta could get to his feet, Goku braced himself and threw a <laughs> hitting Vegeta squarely and bursting the rock that Vegeta hit in flight. Goku lunged at Vegeta and grabbing Vegeta's face, Goku flew low to the ground, dragging the back of Vegeta's head to the ground and then sending him crashing into a mountain. Goku started to punch Vegeta in the face while holding his hair, partially destroying the mountain, but Vegeta grabbed Goku's chin and pulled him up, causing Goku to slam his face into the mountain, destroying it even more. Vegeta landed a hook on Goku's belly, and grabbing his torso, Vegeta took Goku's body into the sky, and halfway through Vegeta dropped him in the air. Vegeta looked at Goku from above and went to him giving a flying that sent Goku down. As soon as Goku touched the ground, Vegeta punched his rival. Vegeta and Goku exchanged a series of punches while both were on the ground. The blows were so frantic and powerful that the earth around them shook and the snow on top of the mountains fell, making an avalanche. The avalanche destroyed everything in its path as it descended from the mountain, but Goku and Vegeta didn't care about the avalanche as they were too focused on winning the match. Goku punched Vegeta in the face and the Prince of Saiyans did the same to his enemy. After Goku and Vegeta exchanged punches, both Saiyans were dragged by the avalanche, but even with all the avalanche, the two Saiyans were still fighting, and even with all the snow, neither of them was missing an attack. Goku and Vegeta were attacking each other in the most balanced duel between the two throughout the fight. Vegeta landed a palm strike to Goku's nose, knocking the Saiyan's head back. After doing so, Vegeta grabbed his opponent's legs and threw him away. Out of the snow, Vegeta let out a scream so loud that the surrounding snow was completely destroyed. To Vegeta's surprise, Goku, even though he was very tired, took the time to start preparing the <laughs> Vegeta saw that Goku's Kamehameha was being loaded very slowly and took the opportunity to fly to Goku, thus giving his enemy a flying. Goku fell bewildered on the ground with his belly up, and on the ground, Goku saw Vegeta flying with a powerful attack in his hand, aiming exactly at Goku's head. Vegeta looked at Goku who was on the ground and shouted in his classic arrogant tone, this time I won't miss. Final flash, said Vegeta, exclaiming the name of his powerful attack. The blow is fired and hit Saiyan son Goku squarely, who was officially defeated. Everyone around looked at that in shock, while Vegeta returned to his base form. The prince of the Saiyan started to laugh, and seeing Goku on the floor defeated, Vegeta started to scream I won. I won. I'm stronger than all of you, you miserable insects. Krillin together with Gohan ran to Goku to treat his wounds. Meanwhile, Vegeta just turned his back with a long smile on his face, because at that moment he had completed his objective, Vegeta had defeated his greatest rival, Son Goku. End. Well guys, I know it's sad when today's video unfortunately ends, and this was the last episode of Vegeta Saga, but don't worry because the next sagas are yet to come. If you liked it, don't forget to leave your like, it helps us a lot and motivates us to continue with these videos that you like so much. That's it, see you guys.